you have to lab in order to pass technical certifications like the NSE4. I don't know why you're not doing this. That's a message to my old self because I thought I could just read a book, know it really well, maybe read a second one or a study guide, read some documentation online, read, 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 and I'm going to be all set. It's not the case. You need to lab. Welcome to my NSE4 series. In this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you everything that you need from the initial setup of the lab to the most complex labbing scenarios that you'll need to know to cover and prepare for and pass the NSC4 exam. This lab, the same lab I'm going to show you how to set up, is the exact same lab I used to pass the NSC4 just a few months ago. Before we get into the content of the video first, I'm going to ask you to do something. Hit the like button if this is a topic that you like. Let me know. It tells me that I need to make more videos like this so I can help you out. Welcome everybody. Uh, first video in the series. So I'm going to lay out the steps of the video so you can kind of follow along, get an idea of what to expect, and then work through those quickly so I don't waste your time and you can get into the action right away. So we're going to do six things here. We're going to download a VM. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to import it into the hypervisor. We're going to verify the VM image settings. We're going to then connect to the console to begin to apply the base config. And then we're going to test access via SSH and HTTP. After that, you just repeat these six steps uh, to get your second and your third FortiGate configured and set up. So first, we have to go to Fortinet. Uh, we have to go to support.fortinet.com, log in. And this is all detailed in another video that I created. Uh, I'll link that below. Once you're logged in, go to download, go to VMware images. We're going to select FortiGate. Uh, I'm working on the VMware platform. I want the newest code version. I want VMware ESXi, not NSX, and I want the newest code version. And I want the new deployment, which is here. I'm going to download that. All right, I downloaded that. I copied it out of my downloads folder. And I pasted it into just a directory on this, on this uh, workstation here, this server that I use to store my virtual machines. You do the same thing. Uh, it comes in this right here. It's a zip file. You're going to want to unzip it into the directory using the exact same name. So choose that option if you're using 7-zip. Uh, spits it out. It puts it into here. You open this up. You have all these files here. You don't have to touch any of them except for this one. This one says FortiGate tech VM64.OVF. Double click that. That opens your hypervisor where you begin the import process. You have to accept the end user license agreement. Click next. Uh, you can change the name here if you want to. I'm going to leave it at default. Same thing for the path. It's going into that virtual machines folder I created. Fine by me. So now it's imported. The first thing you want to do is verify your settings. And you can see them here in VMware Workstation. Uh, I've got all these network adapters because it is a networking appliance. It's got all sorts of adapters. They're set to bridged automatic, which is exactly what I want because I want this FortiGate accessible on my network. And what bridged means is it's going to literally uh, give your physical network, the same network that your workstation you're working on is connected to. It's going to give it an IP address from that network. So it's going to be just like your FortiGate that we're setting up right now is somewhere on your network. Uh, verify your memory processors and hard disk. You don't have to do anything here. You're limited to one processor and, and two gigs of RAM because this is a trial license. At this point, we can go ahead and power it on. Now, the initial power on takes a minute to two minutes because there are some, there's some general chores that the um, hypervisor has to go through and take care of. I'm going to skip over that. Just be aware that if it feels like it's taking a really long time the first time you boot up this VM, completely normal. I want to ask you, let me know in the comments below, what do you want to see covered in this lab series? Is it things like dynamic routing? Is it making IPS signatures? Is it setting up the security profiles? What makes you the most worried about taking the NSC4 exam? Let me know below. I'll make sure to answer your question and then make a video to cover that topic. All right, back into it. There you have it. Uh, it's rebooted. It's coming back up. The login prompt should be available in a minute. While we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and review where we're at here. So we've downloaded the image. We've imported into the hypervisor. We've verified our image settings. We are now connected to the console. We're solidly here in step four. Next step, we're going to apply the base config. So the first time you go to log into a FortiGate, uh, it's good to know what is what's expected. Uh, out of the box, FortiGates have a default username of admin. And they have a blank password. Don't enter anything here. Just hit enter. It'll tell you, hey, you need to change your password. 
this is a lab, so you don't need something super complex, but it does need to be something you can remember. You don't want to be setting your resetting your VMs like I often have to in order to get access. All right, so we're in here. Uh, just a quick reminder. Moving on to step five, applying base config. And I call base config the minimum configuration you need to get your FortiGate appliance, a FortiGate VM onto the network. In order to do that, we're going to type config. And you can tab this out. So you can type conf config sys system interface. Hit enter. And then we're going to edit port one. All one word, port one, not port space one, just port one. We're gonna edit port one. And if you wanna see what's on there already, you can type show. You can see, set allow access is ping, HTTPS, SSH, HTTP, FGFM, which is the FortiGate 40 manager protocol. Uh, it, it thinks it's a physical uh, interface. It's currently set to uh, a DHCP mode, which we need to set to static. And if you notice, there's no IP address listed in there. That's our two problems. So. With FortiGates, to configure something, you want to set it. So we're going to set IP, and then you have to choose an IP address that's on your physical network that will be open and available. So you need to know a little bit about your network. You need to choose an IP address that's open and available and assign that to this. Now I know, oh, you see a little tilde there? That means my numlock's not on. Let me hit numlock. I know that 10.1.1.105 is open. Uh, and if you're reading the Fortinet documentation, it shows you uh, it shows that you have to put a subnet mask in in this format. You don't have to do that. You can, but you can also just do the shorthand slash 24 because that's probably what your home network is is a slash 24. You can do slash subnet size, hit enter, and it'll tell you, hey, dummy, you forgot to set your mode to static. You're currently set to dynamic. So let's first set our mode. Right now it's DHCP. We want to set it to static set mode static, and then we can up arrow twice, get set IP, set IP 10.1.1.105 slash 24. Our interface is now configured. Uh, if you're a Cisco guy or gal, and uh, you're thinking, how do I write memory? How do I save this configuration change? Simply typing end writes that to memory, and then you can get back in there by typing config sys interface, edit port one, issue that show command again. And you can see here, we now have an IP address, Set allow access will allow pings, it will allow HTTPS, HTTP, SSH, and the FortiGate 40 manager protocol. I'm gonna hit end here. The only other thing that we need for this base config to get it on the network and make it accessible is to apply a static route. Right now there's no routes. So we're gonna get in there with configure, config, router, static. And then in here, because it's brand new, there's no routes. It hasn't learned any routes. It doesn't know to learn any routes. Uh, there's no connected routes. You need to come in here and apply a static route so it knows where to send uh, send traffic that's outside of its local subnet. That 10.1.1.105 in order to reach something outside of that, it needs to know where to send it. And we're going to tell it where to send it right here. So we're going to edit 1. And 1 is just a number. It could be 100. It could be 65. It doesn't matter. Logically, I hope you start at one and count your way up. If you just pick random numbers, you're gonna drive me crazy, don't do that. So we're gonna edit one. It says new entry added, one. We're now in static route one. Uh, and you can hit a question mark here and say, well, what are my options here? Again, you see set, unset, get, show, next, abort, end. Uh, abort is the opposite of end. It will get you out, but it won't save your changes. Whereas end will get you out and save, save your changes. So here we want to set. And then you can hit a question mark. What am I setting? Well, we've got status, destination, gateway, distance, weight, priority. What I'm looking for is device. There it is. So I want to set device. And we're going to choose that port that we configured in the first few steps. So set device port 1. And then we're going to say uh, for port 1, here's where I want you to send all the traffic that is not local. All the traffic that's destined for a network that's not 10.1.1.0 slash, uh, slash 24. So we're going to say set gateway. And you have to know your gateway IP address, which is that, no mask needed, hit end. You've now written that there. So at this point, we should be able to ping something on the internet, like Google, for instance. Uh, and, and a quick note on FortiGates, this isn't a Windows machine, this isn't uh, Cisco, this isn't Linux, obviously. 
you need to tell it you want to execute a command when you're talking about ping. So uh, in order to do that, we type exe, short for execute, execute ping, google.com. And there you go, we can see we're getting replies. We know that our standard minimum base configuration to get it on the network is now available. Now if you wanted, you could go into a browser like I just did, open a new tab, and go to that IP address, and you can see here, we can now log in with admin as the username, the password that you defined, and it will tell you, hey, you haven't specified a host name, uh, you need to set up your dashboard. You don't need to do any of that for a lab. You can if you want the experience. I click later. Um, this is just saying, hey, this is what's new in 40 OS 6.4.2. I'm going to tell it, don't show me that again. At this point, you have a uh, functioning FortiGate virtual machine with all the features that you want to run through. You can go ahead and check that out. Uh, there's one minor note at this point. So you can go here uh, and say SSH admin at that IP address that you set up. And I'm going to say OK because obviously I've had other IPs there. I know that this one's not trying to attack me or steal my information. And so here we are. We're on the SSH. We're SSH'd into the FortiGate VM. Uh, the other option is you can go in here and click this little carrot with the underscore. It says CLI console when you hover over it. You can click that and open it up. And this is the exact same console that you have here. Teach their own, however you want to do it. So there you go. We have, getting back to these steps, we've done steps one through six. We have a functioning FortiGate virtual machine. We've accessed it through SSH and HTTP. If you want, and you will need more, if you want more uh, FortiGate VMs, repeating these steps, you don't need to download it. Uh, you will need to start here at two though, importing it into your hypervisor, giving it a new name that's unique, uh, and then working through that base config like we just did in testing access. That will get you ready for the next videos in this series, which we'll be getting into the fun stuff like dynamic routing, creating IPS signatures, setting up LDAP authentication for the administrative users, and all the other fun things that goes with the NSE4 exam. Thanks for watching this far. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be making more like this. I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me there at infosec for human while I post daily about the things that goes on in between these videos. Again, thanks for spending time with me. I look forward to helping you in the future.